the vast landscapes of Western Cape, South Africa, with its towering mountains, lush vineyards, and picturesque beaches, have always been a popular destination among tourists. Among them was Martin Marty Fletcher, an adventurous Australian who had embarked on a solo journey to explore the region's wildlife and natural beauty. Marty, a tall and athletic man in his early 30s with sun-bleached hair and a deep tan, was particularly fascinated with reptiles. Back in Australia, he had encountered various species and had even worked as a guide in a reptile park. This trip was his chance to encounter Africa's most intriguing snakes, particularly the Cape Cobra, known to inhabit the region. One sunny morning after days of exploring the scenic towns and coastal areas, Marty decided to venture into the hinterlands. Equipped with his snake-catching kit, camera, and a map, he headed towards a known habitat where sightings of Cape Cobras were frequent. Hours passed as Marty trod carefully, his eyes scanning the ground and bushes. To the untrained eye, the landscape seemed serene, but Marty knew it was teeming with life. He came across tracks of various animals and even spotted a mongoose, a known predator of snakes. As the sun reached its zenith, Marty stumbled upon an old abandoned farmhouse. Its walls, though weather-beaten, narrated tales of a bygone era. Overcome with curiosity, Marty decided to explore. The farmhouse was eerily silent except for the occasional rustling of leaves. Venturing inside, Marty's attention was drawn to an old chest in the corner of a room. He opened it, hoping to find antiques or remnants of the past. But as he rummaged through, he felt a sudden, sharp pain in his hand. Recoiling in horror, he stared into the beady eyes of a fully grown Cape Cobra, its hood flared in threat. The snake had been resting inside the chest, probably seeking shelter from the heat. Marty knew he was in grave danger. The venom of the Cape Cobra was potent, and he was miles away from any medical help. Panic surged through him, but years of dealing with reptiles had taught him to remain calm in a crisis. He quickly reached for his first aid kit, applied a pressure bandage above the bite site, and immobilized his arm. His immediate concern was to get to the nearest town for anti-venom, but with the sun blazing down and his strength waning, he realized he needed to find shelter and signal for help. He managed to climb to the roof of the farmhouse where he fashioned a makeshift SOS sign using old tiles. With hope dwindling and the venom taking its toll, Marty clung to the thoughts of his family and friends, praying for a miracle. As time passed, his vision blurred and he felt increasingly lightheaded. He knew he was in a race against time. Just when all seemed lost, the faint sound of a vehicle reached his ears. Squinting into the distance, he saw a cloud of dust approaching. It was a local farmer who, noticing the unusual sign on the farmhouse, had come to investigate. With Marty's life hanging in the balance, the farmer quickly loaded him into his truck and sped towards the nearest clinic. The clinic in the nearby village was small and more accustomed to treating common illnesses than snake bites especially of such a dangerous kind. But the local doctor, Dr. Luwazi Mukize, was no stranger to challenges. Having worked in various parts of Africa, she was well-versed in snakebite treatments. As they rushed Marty into the clinic, Dr. Mukize quickly assessed the situation. The bite, now swollen and discolored, was a clear indication of envenomation. She knew that every passing minute was crucial. While the clinic didn't stock the specific anti-venom for Cape Cobras, Dr. Mikiza remembered reading about a newer treatment approach involving broad-spectrum antivenom. Rummaging through the clinic's supplies, she found a vial of the broad-spectrum antivenom, which was effective against multiple snake venoms. Without wasting any time, she administered it to Marty, hoping it would counteract the venom coursing through his body. Outside, word had spread in the village about the Australian tourist who had been bitten by a cobra. Locals gathered, offering support and prayers, their faces etched with concern. Among them was Nalidi, a young girl who, having lost her father to a snake bite years ago, understood the gravity of the situation all too well. As the hours ticked by, Marty's condition began to stabilize. His breathing initially labored grew steadier. The swelling, while still present, didn't seem to spread further. By nightfall, he was conscious, though weak, and managed a faint smile when Dr. McKees assured him he was on the path to recovery. Grateful for his second chance at life, Marty decided to extend his stay in the village. The community's warmth and kindness deeply touched him. In the following weeks, as he regained his strength, Marty, with his knowledge of reptiles, began conducting workshops for the villagers on snake awareness and safety. Nalidi, with her tragic past, became his most attentive student. 
The incident at the farmhouse had not only changed Marty's perspective on life, but had also created a lasting bond between him and the village. He realized that while his initial goal was to observe and learn about the wildlife, there was a greater purpose, to educate and prevent such incidents in the future. Before leaving South Africa, Marty, with the help of Dr. Makiza and Naledi, set up a small center dedicated to snakebite prevention and treatment in the village. This initiative not only equipped the locals with the necessary knowledge, but also ensured that anti-venom was readily available. Years later, the story of the Australian tourist who nearly died in a shocking cobra attack became legendary in the Western Cape. But more than the harrowing tale of survival, it was the legacy of education and prevention that Marty left behind that made a difference. As for Marty, he returned to Australia, forever carrying the memories of his narrow escape and the village that had saved him. While he continued his adventures, he always maintained that his most significant discovery wasn't any exotic reptile, but the boundless capacity of human kindness and community. The Mekong Delta, with its labyrinth of waterways and verdant landscapes, beckoned travelers from all over. Among its recent visitors were Ethan and Mia, a young Australian couple. They were on a quest for both serenity and adventure, celebrating their two years of togetherness. With a rented boat, supplies for a week, and two cameras to document their shared journey, they began their exploration of the Delta's vast rivers and streams. While Ethan was a seasoned traveler, having ventured through various terrains worldwide, Mia was relatively new to this world of adventure. Their dynamic was charming. Ethan's experience perfectly complemented Mia's boundless enthusiasm. As they maneuvered through the Delta, they were captivated by the stilt houses, floating markets, and the myriad hues of life around them. Each day was an adventure. They'd dock at small villages, immerse themselves in the local culture, and enjoy the delicious cuisine. Mia, with her infectious energy, even learned a few Vietnamese phrases, much to the delight of the locals. The couple's bond deepened as they navigated the Mekong's challenges together. One sunny morning, they decided to venture into a lesser explored tributary surrounded by dense mangroves. As they rode deeper, the canopy above thickened, casting dappled sunlight on the water's surface. Ethan, spotting a serene location, suggested they anchor for a while. Eager to capture the beauty around, Mia set up her camera while Ethan took out a small picnic basket. Just as they were settling down, a rustling sound caught Mia's attention. Before she could alert Ethan, a cobra emerged lunging towards them. In a split second, Ethan shielded Mia, taking the brunt of the snake's bite on his arm. Panic set in as they realized the gravity of the situation. Ethan had been bitten by one of the most venomous snake cobras in the region. Mia's heart raced. She had to act quickly. Recalling a documentary they had watched together, she tried to keep Ethan calm, slowing his heart rate to delay the venom spread. She then rummaged through their supplies, looking for a first aid kit and their satellite phone. Time was of the essence, and with Ethan's condition deteriorating, Mia had to muster all her strength. Alone with her injured boyfriend in the Mekong Delta's heart, their romantic getaway had suddenly turned into a race against time. With the phone in hand, Mia dialed the emergency services. Her voice trembled as she relayed their location and the nature of the emergency to the operator. She was informed that due to their remote location, it would take some time for help to arrive. The operator advised her to keep Ethan calm and restrict movement in the bitten arm to slow the venom spread. Mia tied a makeshift tourniquet above the bite mark, ensuring it was not too tight. She then tried to elevate Ethan's arm to reduce swelling. All the while, she whispered words of encouragement reminding him of their shared memories and the future they had planned together. As minutes felt like hours, Mia noticed a boat approaching in the distance. Two fishermen, having heard their distress call over the radio, had come to assist. With their combined efforts, they managed to transfer Ethan to the boat, speeding towards the nearest village with medical facilities. The boat's engine roared through the quiet waters of the Mekong Delta. Mia held on to Ethan, praying silently and hoping against hope. The fishermen, recognizing the severity of the situation, navigated expertly through the waterways, avoiding any delays. Upon reaching the village, a local medic, prepared with anti-venom, was waiting. Ethan was quickly carried to a makeshift clinic where the medic administered the anti-venom and provided primary care. The hours following were agonizing for Mia. She waited outside, her thoughts a whirlwind of fear and hope. 
As the night wore on, the medic emerged, fatigue evident in his eyes, but with a reassuring smile on his face. Ethan was stable. The anti-venom had worked, and while he would need a few days to recover fully, he was out of danger. Relief washed over Mia as she rushed to Ethan's side. Their ordeal had been a stark reminder of the unpredictability of nature and the fragility of life, but it had also showcased the indomitable human spirit, the kindness of strangers, and the strength of their bond. The couple spent the next few days in the village, recuperating and expressing their gratitude to the villagers and fishermen who had come to their aid. Finally, as they departed the Mekong Delta, the landscape that had once seemed so serene now held a deeper meaning for them. Their journey had been transformed from a simple vacation into a life-changing experience. In the rich, fertile plains of the Arabia Delta in Egypt, the winding waterways and lush vegetation painted a picture of paradise. But for Liam Baxter, an Australian tourist with a penchant for off-the-beaten-path adventures, this seemingly serene setting would soon become the backdrop for a harrowing encounter. Liam had always been fascinated by the ancient civilizations of Egypt. From the Grand Pyramids to the Majestic Sphinx, he'd seen them all. But what intrigued him was the Rabia Delta, a place not often frequented by tourists. With its myriad of water channels, tiny islands, and abundant bird life, it was a haven for nature enthusiasts. So, armed with a camera, a guidebook, and an insatiable curiosity, Liam set out to explore this lesser-known gem. On a sunny afternoon, while navigating through one of the Delta's narrower channels in a small wooden boat, Liam spotted an old, dilapidated structure on a nearby island. It looked like a remnant from a bygone era, perhaps an old temple or a dwelling. Eager to explore, he docked his boat and walked through the thickets towards the structure. As he approached, he noticed intricate carvings on the walls, depicting what seemed like scenes from ancient rituals. The air was thick with the scent of dampness and age. The ground, though, was unusually dry with a series of cracks, as if the earth had split open. Curiously, he followed one such crack that led him to a small clearing. Suddenly, the ground beneath him seemed to move. Before he could react, a large cobra disturbed from its resting place rose, hood expanded and hissed menacingly. Liam froze. The cobra, its scales glistening under the sun, was easily one of the largest he had ever seen. Its eyes locked onto Liam's, and in that brief moment, the gravity of his situation became painfully clear. He was in the territory of one of the most venomous snakes in the world. With every ounce of self-control, Liam began to backtrack slowly, keeping his movements deliberate and non-threatening. But the cobra, perhaps sensing his fear, lunged forward, narrowly missing Liam's leg. Panic set in, and Liam turned to flee, but in his haste he tripped over a protruding root, sending him crashing to the ground. The cobra, now more agitated than before, closed in, its forked tongue tasting the air. It was clear that this was no ordinary snake. Its size and aggression indicated that it might be a dominant figure in this territory. Liam, realizing that he was running out of options, searched his surroundings for anything that might help. To his left, he spotted a fallen branch, long and sturdy. Without a second thought, he grabbed it and used it as a barrier between himself and the advancing snake. The cobra, sensing a challenge, hissed louder, its body coiling in anticipation. As the standoff continued, the setting sun cast long shadows over the delta, and the once tranquil waterways echoed with the tension of the moment. Liam, desperate to escape this perilous situation, began to strategize. He knew he had to come up with a plan. Liam's mind raced. While he had read about cobras and their behavior during his pre-trip research, facing one in the wild was an entirely different experience. His primary objective was to avoid sudden movements that could further provoke the snake. With the branch firmly in hand, Liam began to inch sideways, attempting to create distance between himself and the cobra without turning his back on it. Every time the snake lunged, he used the branch to block its path, trying to guide it away from him. The snake, however, seemed relentless. Its piercing eyes remained locked onto Liam, awaiting an opportune moment to strike. Minutes felt like hours. With each step, Liam felt the weight of the situation bearing down on him. The combination of the sweltering heat the mental strain of the standoff and the physical exertion was beginning to take its toll. His clothes clung to his body, drenched in sweat, and his arms grew weary from holding the branch. Recognizing that he couldn't keep this up forever, Liam decided to change tactics. He began tapping the ground firmly with the branch, creating vibrations. He had read that snakes, which lack ears, 
are sensitive to ground vibrations. He hoped that the disturbance would deter the cobra or at the very least distract it momentarily. To his relief, the strategy seemed to work. The cobra, disoriented by the vibrations, momentarily shifted its attention from Liam to the ground. Seizing this window of opportunity, Liam mustered all his strength and threw the branch away from him, hoping the snake would follow its trajectory. As expected, the cobra, drawn to the movement of the thrown branch, darted in its direction. This brief distraction gave Liam the chance he needed. He quickly got to his feet and began retracing his steps back to the boat, all the while keeping a watchful eye on the cobra. Reaching the water's edge, Liam's heart raced as he scrambled into his boat and began paddling away with all his might. The distance between him and the island grew, and with it, his sense of relief. As he looked back, the cobra was still visible, standing tall in the clearing. Its hood expanded, watching him retreat. Exhausted both mentally and physically, Liam made his way back to the main waterway. The danger he had faced served as a stark reminder of the unpredictability of nature and the need for caution, even in the most beautiful of settings. By the time he returned to his starting point, night had fallen. The stars above shone brightly, reflecting off the calm waters of the Arabia Delta. With the boat secured, Liam took a moment to process the day's events. The beauty of the Delta, juxtaposed with the danger he had faced, made for a surreal experience. As he prepared to leave, he made a silent promise to himself. While he would continue to seek adventures, he would do so with a heightened sense of respect for the natural world and its inhabitants. The Rabia Delta had offered him both beauty and peril, an experience he would carry with him for the rest of his life. Sumatra, Indonesia, 1999. The vast stretches of lush rainforest beckoned travelers from all corners of the world, luring them with the promise of raw, untouched beauty. The landscape, pulsating with life, whispered tales of times long gone. Among these adventurers was Larry Mitchell, an Australian historian with an insatiable thirst for unearthing hidden stories. Alongside him was Jessica Alvarez, a passionate geographer whose map of the world was etched in her heart. Larry's sun-tanned skin, rugged beard, and deep-set blue eyes mirrored his adventurous spirit. Jessica, on the other hand, was a force of nature with her short, curly hair and spirited demeanor. Together, they aimed to document the lesser-known stories of ancient trade routes, hoping to find remnants of the past in Sumatra's vast expanse. As they ventured deeper into the forest, the dense canopy overhead and the symphony of nature around them set the scene for their exploration. They had chosen a spot near a bubbling brook, its clear waters reflecting the azure skies to set up their camp. On one of their explorative days, Jessica's keen eyes spotted something glistening amidst the foliage. It was an ancient coin, its details hinting at an era of prosperous trade. The discovery was momentous, a tangible piece of history they could take back. However, as Larry leaned in to examine their find, the earth beneath him seemed to shift. Disturbed from its slumber, a king cobra reared its majestic hood, its eyes locked onto the intruder. The forest's ambient sounds faded into a deafening silence. Every second felt like an eternity. Jessica whispered to stay still, her voice trembling but clear. The cobra, one of the most venomous snakes in the world, could unleash a fatal bite. She had heard tales of its potency, and now they were facing it head on. Time seemed to stretch. The shimmering coin lay forgotten as two lives hung in the balance. Larry, controlling his breathing, tried to recall every piece of advice he had heard about such encounters. Jessica, meanwhile, slowly reached for a stick. With utmost caution, she gently nudged the snake, creating a distraction. The cobra, sensing the movement, turned its gaze towards her. This gave Larry a precious few seconds to move away from its striking distance. The cobra, perhaps deciding that the two posed no immediate threat, eventually slid away, disappearing into the forest undergrowth. The palpable tension in the air dissipated, replaced by a mixture of relief and disbelief. The duo, shaken by the close call, decided to retreat for the day. Their campfire that night was filled with reflections on the fragility of life and the unpredictable nature of the wild. Their journey in Sumatra had offered them a glimpse into the past, but it had also taught them the importance of respecting the present. As the embers of their campfire flickered and the nocturnal sounds of the forest played their lullaby, Larry and Jessica prepared for another day in Sumatra, aware that the forest had many more stories to share and challenges to throw their way. 
The next morning, as the first rays of sunlight pierced through the canopy, Larry and Jessica were up and ready. The encounter with the King Cobra had left them cautious but undeterred. They decided to spend the day near the camp, exploring the immediate vicinity and documenting their findings. As they went about their day, Jessica couldn't help but wonder about the native communities that lived harmoniously with such formidable wildlife. She decided to engage with a local guide, Arif, known for his deep knowledge of the forest and its inhabitants. Arif, a tall man with weathered skin and a gentle demeanor, shared tales of his ancestors who had navigated these terrains for generations. He spoke of their respect for every creature, understanding that each had its role in maintaining the delicate balance of the ecosystem. Arif narrated anecdotes of locals who had similar close encounters, emphasizing the importance of understanding animal behavior and always being alert. Larry, always the historian, was keen to understand the significance of the coin they had found. Arif's eyes lit up in recognition. The coin, he explained, was a symbol of ancient trade between Sumatran merchants and neighboring regions. Such finds were rare and held immense historical value. The day was filled with shared knowledge and mutual respect. Arif taught them about the various plants crucial for survival, some with medicinal properties and others that could be used as repellents against potential threats. As the sun gradually descended, painting the forest in a golden light, Arif chose that moment to impart a final piece of wisdom. He drew a parallel between the forest and life, emphasizing its unpredictable, challenging, and occasionally perilous nature. Yet he highlighted the potential for valuable rewards if approached with respect, comprehension, and an eagerness to learn, experiences that linger as enduring memories. That evening, as Larry and Jessica sat by their campfire, they felt a profound connection with the land and its stories. The coin, now safely tucked away, was not just a relic of the past, but a testament to the enduring spirit of exploration and discovery. Their time in Sumatra ended, but the lessons they had learned would stay with them. They returned home with more than just souvenirs. They carried stories of courage, resilience, and the age-old bond between humans and nature. Months later in Australia, Larry held an exhibition showcasing their findings. The ancient coin was the centerpiece, drawing historians and enthusiasts alike. But more than the artifacts, it was their tale of the close encounter with the King Cobra that captivated the audience. Jessica, using the platform, emphasized the importance of coexisting with wildlife and sharing the wisdom imparted by a reef.